Welcome to WooTube. My name's Baran Woo, and this is Sophie's Choice, built to last. This is a deck which I've been playing for a while now, um, been tweaking it as I go, and I actually really enjoy it. I've played a few different versions, and this is the most recent version which I've settled on. This is a combo deck, and we're essentially looking um, just to kill the runner as fast as we can, uh, and we're going to use a couple of tactics to do that. But our main one is focused on this card, Armed Intimidation. This is a 4-2 Wayland Agenda. It says, when you score Armed Intimidation, the runner must either suffer 5 meat damage or take 2 tacks. Now, usually giving the opposition a choice is often a weaker option um, when it comes to cards in Netrunner. Um, so we need to be able to make sure that whatever they choose here, it's going to be bad for them. And that's where we're going to put them in the idea of a Sophie's Choice or a, an impossible to choose situation. Um, so let's look at what this deck does. Essentially, we're going to try and get out a little bit of ice on a server, preferably um, a couple of different types of kind of end the run or um, things which are going to stop the runner. And then we're going to install and double advance and armed intimidation in the server. Uh, needless to say, we're uh, built to last. So we actually do that without kind of having to spend any money as we gain the money back from making the advancements. Um, the next turn, and this uh, this agenda does have to sit in the server for at least one turn, so um, this is, there's some fragility there, certainly. Uh, but next turn we're going to play Seamless Launch, and that's going to give us four counters on our uh, agenda, allowing us to score it. Um, did I mention that we had put it on top of a Malapert data vault. No, I didn't. Um, so at this point, we get to choose how these triggers work. Um, because if we look back at Armed Intimidation, the runner has a choice. Uh, but we can make them make the choice first. So at this point, we've scored Armed Intimidation. Because we've used a seamless launch, we still have two clicks left, which is very important. Um, and they either take two tags or they're going to take five meat damage. So that's fine. They can just do whatever they think is the safest option. Let's say they take two tags. I'm pretty sure we all know how this goes in uh, any Wayland deck. Uh, they take two tags. Um, we are going to use Malapert Data Vault to search for a boom, uh, which we can do after their choice. And then we're going to play this, which says if they have two tags, do seven meat damage, uh, which is pretty much in most circumstances enough to kill the runner um, but maybe they think well if I take two tags I'm going to get boomed so instead I'll take five meat damage because I've got five cards in hand that's not going to kill me so I'll be safe uh, if they take five meat damage then we're going to use the Malapert data vault to search for a Neurospike and Neurospike says uh, do x net damage uh, where x uh, is the same as the printed agenda points just scored. So this is going to do an extra two damage, um, which alongside the five, which uh, Armed Intimidation has just done, is going to amount to seven as well. Um, this is slightly less reliable as a method because um, the uh, if the runner has steel skins in their hand, then uh, they can be safe from this version. Um, but it's still pretty much consistent enough. So that's going to be our main wing con. Now, if that was the only way that this, um, this deck uh, had of winning, then I'd f think it was far too fragile um, because it really relies on us drawing um, one of three agendas at very specific times um, and being able to protect them for a turn. Uh, so we need some kind of backup plans here. Um, so one other option that we have for <clears throat> winning this game is playing Orbital Superiority. I kind of think this, this is a little bit of an underappreciated agenda. doesn't really see much play, but it actually has some potentially uh, strong options. We're only really using this for the tag option here. 
um, because it's very rare that the runner is going to have tags when we score this. So um, with this as an option, we can install and double advance. We can then either just advance, advance, give the runner a tag, and then we have options there. Um, or we can seamless and do two things uh, similar to with the armed intimidation. So what can we do with one tag? Well, we have end of the line. So if the runner is on um, three cards or less, then we can do four meat damage with an end of the line and we can kill them this way. Again, we can search for this using the Malapert data bolt. Uh, sometimes we just have one of these in hand anyway. Uh, we're playing two in the deck. Um, if we use a seamless to score out the orbital superiority, then we can play a neuro spike first or second uh, for two damage and then an end of the line for four. Um, this means that we're still doing six damage, which is usually enough to, to kill the runner. Now, obviously, we're now getting into like trickier combos because this is kind of a uh, even with the Malapert, we still need to have two of those combo pieces in hand. Uh, we need to have either the nearest bike or an end of the line. Um, but it's definitely a backup option. Um, there's also obviously various tech that uh, runners could be playing. They could be on no free lunches. The nice thing about including end of the lines in our deck here is that with the armed intimidations, if they clear one tag using a uh, no free lunch, then we still have options with an end of the line or end of the line plus neurospike combo to kill the runner. So let's have a little look at some of the other cards which are included in this deck. We have a single copy of best defense. Um, we did just mention that uh, no free lunch could be an issue. We're seeing a bit less no free lunch now that uh, Drago's gone, but this is a way of us dealing with no free lunch, removing it from the table. And more importantly, um, this gets rid of no one home, which can really shut down our combo in a very big way. Um, and I was kind of scared of people starting to slot no one homes instead of no free lunches now that Drago is not a thing anymore. Um, so we're playing one best defense um, just as a, a way of not getting completely shut out by a single card, which is semi-common to be played. Um, we are playing two copies of Standoff, which seems like a, an, a slightly odd card here, but it actually has three different functions. Um, firstly, this is a money card. Uh, we are playing Built to Last, so we make money from um, all things that we can advance. This is something that we can advance. We, we kind of score this out for free, essentially. It does take us our turn. But then we can um, draw a card and gain five, unless the runner wants to trash stuff. Um, and you can get into some quite fun trashing battles. I have had some where uh, the runner refuses to give me five, but they end actually end up with very little board state left. Um, so firstly, this is Econ. Secondly, we can actually use this as a tutor card um, because we're playing three copies of Malapert Data Vault. Um, we can use the standoff, scoring a standoff off a Malapert uh, to draw us into Seamless Launch, um, which is a really important card for our combo. We don't really want to draw into um, the other parts of the combo normally. We don't want to draw into the boom or the neuro spike um, because it's sometimes easier for the runner to get rid of them from hand. We'd rather pull them off the Malapert data vault when we score the armed intimidation. Obviously, sometimes they just end up in our hand anyway, but that's fine. Um, and then the third option for this, uh, sorry, actually, there's four reasons to play it. Um, another reason to play it is that we are on a copy of Archer. Uh, this has been two copies of Archer in the past. Um, I'm now on one uh, and some Stavka, which I'll talk about in a, in a second. Um, Archer is about the only really taxing, I certainly the only really taxing sentry that um, that Wayland has, which is particularly relevant here. Uh, we really need an, an end run for our, for our combo to work because we need to be able to protect armed intimidation. Um, Archer is a nasty ice, and because we're not really looking to kind of score out um, 
the rest of our agendas we don't mind about sacking so even if we've for instance scored an orbital early or something like that um we don't mind sacking that because if we're going to get the win with the armed intimidation play then we're we're quite happy with that um standoff is pretty much the best thing that we can sack to an to an archer um there's nothing better and then the last option is that we can also use it as a trap um if we haven't got the win early enough like before the runner has found all their breakers and and various ways into our server then we're going to need to to tax them out by pulling them through a server several times um and at that point we just want anything which we can install and double advance in a server that's not going to help the runner um as such uh standoffs are really good in this in this thing because uh they very much look like an agenda because they are one but they're not one that is going to help the runner um win the game uh but we're also not going to kind of mind if we install and double advance this and don't score it out um especially if we've already got one scored um the rest of our ice so we mentioned archer which is which is a one-off but it's um kind of mostly rush based ice so we've got standstone which is actually a really good um early rush ice it's a little weak to botulus but other than that uh this is pretty expensive to break um especially on on the first time which you're going through this and this is usually um what is protecting our remote on along with um a couple of other pieces so we've often not even really rezzed this until we need to so it hasn't started losing strength um and then we're playing two copies of stavka <clears throat> um this i found to be actually a, a pretty good card um a seven strength century trashing programs has often been a big surprise to corpse especially they're, they're not expecting something um when you're only on sort of four or five credits and um this has caught particularly criminals um who are on things like turtle and kind of expecting to get through anything once they've got sort of four or five counters this has done some really really good work um and i found it to be pretty effective uh rush ice especially in this instance where on the turn where we're trying to win we don't care if we're trashing sort of say our ice off hq or or r d um just so that we can um we can keep them out for that one turn um and then lastly we should mention that the idea itself so one thing that the uh, eagle-eyed of you might have noticed is there are no hedge funds in this deck. Uh, we don't actually have kind of the time to play them. We almost never need them. Our one very tricky matchup is against certain 419 builds because all of our econ is installable, which can be pretty bad against 419. Um, so that's the one time that we'd often like to have hedge funds. But we play ngo front which is an incredible amount of um value in built to last because we're getting the extra money from advancing it um we can advance our agendas basically uh uh sort of for free um or on tempo um and the last uh, two advancements will come from a, a seamless launch which is only one credit so for the for the final turn and we're, we're kind of trying to go fast enough that we just have enough money to get the win and we'll need kind of normally about six credits um to secure a win in some circumstances where we need sort of multiple pieces then we might need anything up to about eight um for the actual kind of winning play um but we're running very low to the ground because of that and um we don't really have the deck slots for things like hedge fund obviously like you could cut some of the fun things if you um wanted to do that um i found this to be a pretty effective deck it's got some good backdoor outs it's got some good surprise wins uh and we're going to go into some gameplay
Okay, so we have another game with Sophie's Choice built to last. Like have fun. Playing against Nox64. Um, this is a reasonable starting hand. I don't hate it. I actually quite like Stavka early against uh, Anox because they're more likely to be on uh, uh, things like Fermenter. I think I'm going to keep it. I like the Rashida. Uh, let's see what we're drawing to. Spin Doctor. Do I care about leaving that open in HQ? I think that's fine. Uh, I'm going to put this in now so we don't potentially see it in HQ. We we have an, a more coming down immediately. That is terrifying for us. We've lost a seamless launch. Um, yeah, okay, more is going to be very tricky, especially when drawing into hands like this, because we are very combo heavy deck. Well, what do you do here? I think we, I mean, I want to keep the armed intimidation is the problem. I think we need to jam the Rashida. Maybe we jam Rashida Malapur and then just pray. I feel like we're just gonna run HQ four times. I haven't got that much of a better plan though here. Um let's just assume they don't steal the armed intimidation and we get like a turn free kill. Um, do want the seamless back. I also don't want them to knock something out of hand so quickly. I'm gonna let them to do, decide to do what to, with it. I'm gonna let them decide what to do with this. They trash it. I think that's correct. Right. Don't find the armed. Okay, they found the armed problem. Uh, we found it, oh, and of course they hit the other Rashida. Okay, we're very much on the back foot now. We'd like some ice. We have some ice. Unfortunately, our Stavkas do nothing here. Oh, this is going to feel um, quite tough. Okay, we've drawn our last bin doctor, so that's at least something. I guess we're gonna put this out and res it. And I think we just put the NGO in server one. And then we probably throw out Stavka. I think it's actually right now the worst thing in our hand. Well, we found all of our spin doctors. <laughs> um, so they're massively drawn up, they're just looking for breakers now. So we're going to need to get a bit more ice going on. Um, they threw out a... Okay, they've got a clip and an orchestra. So our sandstones aren't going to last long. I think we probably need to double ice HQ. Or we might need to put something that's relevant on R and D. Are we popping this spin doctor yet? Don't think we are. Okay, that is actually perfect to go on HQ. So I'm going to advance this once. The question is do we wanna where do we want to drag them? We probably want to drag them through here, but if the archer is the only ice which I really want to put here. I'm definitely putting this on HQ. And then it's whether we protect R and D or whether we protect the remote more. Just worried that this remote currently does that this ice currently does nothing, so I think we're going to protect R and D. Okay, now finally our Stavka does something. Um 
I can just see what's in here. I don't think there's any massive reason to to hide that. Um, we're still going to need one more ice in front of this, preferably like our one magnet would be amazing. I think now we could pop this for the two other spin doctors. Because drawing one, we draw a boom, which is actually uh, a bad draw. We could try and score out this GFI. Don't really want to, but ironically, we could then use it to <laughs> to rest this archer, which is hilarious. I think we draw one. That's not great, but let's um, let's pretend we can do something here. I think this feels so incredibly like an NGO. It's hilarious. Um, if I don't have steel skins in hand, we might be able to get the win. Uh, we might be able to get this off an alt. We see a numb. Okay, that gets them through Stavka. It also gets them through Archer, but it's still expensive for Archer. I think we could probably push this turn. Um, got an NGO. Okay, so we've got something else to drag them through, if not. So let's do this, and we're just going to install a double advance here. So this is the, the less strong play, unfortunately, but what we can do here. Um, is seamless end of the line and neuro spike. Um, it's tricky if they have at least one steel skin in hand. So we probably do get a chance here to try to go for this. Now the question is, do we hit? The end of the line first, which is more likely to hit the steel skins, or do we hit the neuro spike first? But we only have one neuro spike in the deck, and we've already lost some spin doctors. Uh, I think we go for the more likely play of just scoring out this, uh, of not scoring out, but winning this turn. So let's score. We're gonna pull. We'll give him the tag. Yes, we're going to pull a Neurospike. We'll hit the Neurospike and we'll end the line. GG. Okay, that was uh, very sketchy, but shows that this uh, kind of what this deck is planning to do it kind of pulls a win out of nowhere um or has the opportunity to and interestingly so we did hit a steel skin so i think if we did this the other way around which is maybe the safer way because we have lots of end of the lines so we'd we're potentially using our only neuro spike uh in that play but if we played the end of the line first then we probably hit the steel skin and then uh, they draw enough to protect them from uh, the six damage. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, so we're playing Sophie's Choice built to last. Uh, we're against Adam, which can be a little bit scary. A lot of our ice only has one good subroutine um, or good end of run. I don't know why I assume that they'll always be running. Uh, it's, it's a few months later. Um, I think we probably look for something a bit faster than this to start with. This has some stuff that's, that's good. Um, we could just score the standoff. They might just want to trash one of their directives. I think we probably want to keep them out of HQ more than anything. So I think we'll just put the mask as an HQ and take two. Okay, R and D key. Um, so we might be playing against uh, 
the bank are list that Seb K took to the meta test recently. Um, let's see what they do. I would assume they take the money here. And they, okay, they have a logic bomb, which is really good to know. Very important for us. We're going to be trying to rush behind probably only one or two pieces of ice. Have a brain chip already, which is really good for them. They've got another jailbreak, so we might want to protect R and D. Um, they know that we've got a sandstorm. We could score out this standoff just for some more money, but I think we probably want to get some protection on the go. Um, there's a chance that we put down the Malapert if we run it. That's pretty good for us. Uh, if they don't run it, then we can score the standoff off it. <sighs> this is pretty bad. You're going to steal almost definitely the armed. I wish that this was still in hand now so that they'd have to trash it. I think we have to res here. They probably just logic bomb this. They, uh, they might take the tag, actually, and then clear the tag. We're pretty poor. Yeah. Oh, they lost a mad dash. That's actually pretty big. Um, it's, uh, it's an interesting matchup because we want to go really fast, they want to go really fast. In general, they see the staff curse, so they're not stealing both of these. That's it, may be good. Yeah, okay. Well, they steal the one which we kind of needed, so that's a shame. Oh, no, of course, they see all three because <laughs> of the jailbreak, so and because of neutralize all threats. If you're new to Adam, you start with these three directives. Well. You start with a choice out of four. It's usually these three. Safety first, which will give you card draw, um, but also reduce your hand size. Uh, there'll also be neutralize or frets, um, which gains you like HQ multi-access, um, but means you have to trash things. And there's find the truth, which lets you see the top of R&D, but we also get to see what they draw. And we knew no they drew a sure gamble, which they're going to be able to play next turn. Um, they know that we've drawn this NGO front, so I think we draw once. We install advance. They'll assume this is the NGO pretty safely. But that's kind of fine. Um, and these directives, uh, there's also one other one, which is um, always be running, which means they have to run on the first click every turn. Um, but they also do have the option of spending two clicks to break one subroutine uh, once a turn. There's a chance it's not once per turn, but I'd need to have a look. Um, but you, it's rare that you'd have enough clicks to use that ability more than more than once. Um, okay, they're running here. Uh, we could force them to trash the Malapert. I kind of don't want to show them the sandstone, but I think I'm going to. They'll uh, just bounce, which makes sense. Uh, here, I like this run a lot because this forces us to use our um, our NGO so they don't have to contest it any further. And they draw an overclock, also good to know. And they draw a bank card, yeah. So this is uh, Seb K's list uh, or something very similar at least. Uh, okay, we draw a seamless launch, which is quite nice to have. Let's uh, let's get this res. This gives us a tiny bit of protection against um, 
I'm telling the truth. We could put a Stavka down on archives. I kind of want to stop the easy runs. So I think I'm going to... Um, this probably does just enough. It, I'd almost prefer to put it on R&D because time when I'm really going to want to fire it is uh, if they're running on R&D to turn off their RNG key because that's the only thing I can trash at the moment. Um, but I don't think this is going to be very good ice elsewhere because I'm pretty sure this whole list is going to be on bin breakers. Uh, and they draw another shore gamble. We've got a multi threader, dirty laundry, drew net in hand. They're pretty well set up. I think we're all, we've already lost this one essentially. Um, okay, so we're we have Bankar, which means that we're going to struggle to do too much here. Uh, we can just about maybe score this Rashida. Say score. Um, we're just going to put that in the bin for now. If they can come in and trash this, it will cost them one logic bomb. They don't care about the cards in their hand, really. Then the question is, if they pop a logic bomb for it, do we pop the border control to protect the Rashida? Uh, they're targeting R&D here, actually, so this is fine. Uh, Multifreder. Going in here with a dirty laundry, knowing that they're going to be able to get in, they lose an overclock. They're not going to mind about that, they can't really use those credits right now. Uh, they might well draw here, I think um, they have more money than they need. Uh, this is RNG key, if you're unfamiliar. Okay, we just take the money. Um, a card which you often see in Adam. Um, usually only see it in combination with Find the Truth. Uh, it essentially allows you to either gain three or draw two cards. If, the, if you can guess, guess, the uh, res or play cost of the top card of R&D, or the next card you see on either R&D or HQ, so it does work off HQ as well. It's a bit less powerful with HQ. Um, can we jam out here the problem is now they have um a really huge hand size or huge enough that uh i don't think we can win off an orbital um because it's not enough it's not going to be enough damage um, I think we're going to need uh, it, it depends if they go a bit low on cards then we might have some options and um, maybe we need to put something with more subroutines we probably need to put something with more subroutines in front of this to stop the easy bank car uh, ironically I guess they're going to like draw anyway but um But yeah, it's like we might need to try and set up for, okay, we lost the boom, which was about to say, we might need to look for a setup for a boom, maybe even a boom plus neuro spike. Oh, they drew a no, no free lunch as well. Well, if they play that, then I think we're absolutely boned. Um, Um, so we're going to need to res like a fair amount of ice. Uh, we're going to want this on in so one. We're going to need another ice before we jam. Uh, we haven't got any breakers yet though. Uh, maybe not. We do need this to get the boom back, so I think we can push next turn. 
Um, if they don't find any breakers, and I don't think they've drawn any. If they install the no free lunch, we're in a fair amount of trouble. Uh, I think we want to keep the ice. We definitely need to keep seamless, so we'll have to get rid of this. We might need to get rid of one orbital, which is probably fine. We're going to bring back a boom. I did want to bring back the other spin doctor, but no chance of that. Okay, double logic bomb. Now, luckily, this border control, if they don't find a paperclip now, all they need at the moment to get through here is paperclip, which is problematic. Um, but if they don't find a paperclip, then we might have this next turn. They see a Rashida, they trash it, they have to. Again, I think I'd be drawing, like they have a, a whole load of money now. They really don't need all this money. Um, what they probably do want is cards. They drew Miss Bones. Um, we don't want to fire this Spin Doctor yet. So, oof. Um, so we're going to install the double advance here. Now, if they install the no free lunch, <clears throat> we can only kill them if they end on five cards or less. Uh, Fires. I mean, the chip damage from Bankar is actually somewhat significant here. I guess if they, again, they're drawing, they're gaining money. When actually cards is the thing that's going to save them here. I think we're going to get away with this one. Um, okay, so let's do this correctly. Uh, so we're going to res and pop a spin doctor. We're going to put it back in the boom and the orbital. We'll do um, seamless launch onto the armed intimidation. We'll score the armed intimidation. We'll choose armed intimidation first. So they have to choose whether they want to take five meat damage, which they cannot do at this point, or they can take two tags. We're going to search for a boom and we get a boomer. In fact, we don't even need to. Look, we can just do end of a line. For style. Okay. Um, so maybe our opponent just not quite realising the, the threat that we're in here. If they didn't install these cards last turn, we're in a lot of trouble. Um, if they install the no free lunch, we're probably in some trouble and if they were just drawing more which i think uh, is something they could have done um they have a hand size of eight uh we are we can kill them with a boom into neuro spike but we need like a four advanced agenda in server one before we can do that so pretty hard to do okay let's try another one okay so we're playing sophie's choice built to last we're against lat could be APOC, which could be an issue. Um, we don't want this hand because it's got all of our combo pieces and actually that starts to make things very clunky. Um, so we're going to mulligan. Okay, this is like at least a somewhat defensive hand. Um, 
so I think we're just going to go HQ R, R and D. We're just going to gain credit. We're not going to advance the ice because uh, we're probably not going to get it to free. Oh, money. Um, and it. Uh, um, and we don't want to show them that give them any idea what it is. So they just have like an absolute ton of money and a Beth. Uh, we draw an agenda. That's a shame. Um, we're putting this down in the new remote. No, we won't put that down in the new remote because our ice doesn't really protect it at all. Um, I think we probably just ice R and D and take a credit. Feels a bit bad. Don't really want to put Starvka on the inside is the issue. So we want... I mean, a sandstone would be ideal. That's like our perfect inner one. We see a test run for an orca. Are they going to rejig this? That's pretty cool if they are. I'm down with it. Our Stavka is much worse now. Wow, so they're going to hard install this? Oh, okay, they're going to spark this out. Or... Damn. If you are about to... Assimilate and walker out of that. I'm down with it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, right. Ouch. That was a spark target then. Uh, right. <sighs> okay, let's draw one. Okay, there's an end to run. Right, well, their money's going to dry up very quickly if they have to install an orca for a lot of money. Um, but now we have like a pretty decent we've got daredevil turbine expected um throwing out the orca so maybe they're on um retrieval run as well all the runs uh so we can make a pretty decent remote of stuff get into magnet into border control i quite like that um i might just set that up now and take a credit um because then we just need to draw our agenda. And this is where you could consider playing something like digital rights management. Um, the only issue with it is that it shows exactly what's going on. Okay, so uh, playing the harmony. I think they're getting back the orca in the test run and they're going to go for that play again. Uh, so they bring back Diesel, Dirty Laundry, Orca, Peace and Our Time, Sure Gamble. Okay. Lots of money. Uh, but they are quite, quite poor right now. We see a twinning. Okay, so that makes the Orca make a bit more sense. Um, Rashida is fine. We can um, install and click for two. We'll draw a ton next turn. <laughs> um, I think the answer is play more orcas. Um, 
so our opponent just says that Beth drew them their Orca, which they are clearly planning to spark because they had the spark in hand. Uh, so they get another Turbine down, so if they do get their full Breaker Sweet up, then our Ice is useless. <sighs> we don't draw quite what we want, and we've drawn a Boom into hand, which is awkward. Um, I think we're going to put out the Spin Doctor to see what we can find. Okay. Um, maybe we should have just gone for the orbital there, I think. Because I think we still probably have it, right? That was that was a mistake. Uh, so I'm just going to take some money here. I'm going to throw out the GFI. Going to keep the boom. We're going to throw out the Malapert. I might keep the best defense. Get a throw out the archer because if they are on orca now it deals with it quite handily i think orca is like all subs or three subs and it will already be at strength um clots in the bin that's fine we don't worry about clot we're not trying to fast advance okay so ah oh, even better right so we'll resin pop this and we'll install the double advance so we've got a really quite decent server here. Um, three different types of ice. One of them is a border control as well. We can always trash something off this stuff and they play a piece in our time, which means we pretty much guarantee the win next turn. Now they are lat, so that's something that I, I should have bared in mind. We can't actually kill them off six. Oh, we see their entire deck. Um, we can't actually kill them off the orbital play here um, because they, unless we drop some of our hand size, um, they'll often be at more. Can we kill? Yes, we can still kill them off a neurospike play, so we're okay. So we'll res We're going to seamless launch out our armed intimidation. We're going to score it. We'll do the armed intimidation first. We'll let them have a choice, because we're nice. We'll give them a choice. They are thinking. It's your choice. How bad could it be? Uh, they take the two tags. Um, was we'll just we'll search for the uh, neurospike just so that they know that it was there either way, and we'll play the boom. Okay, unfortunate for my opponent there. They uh, I mean they had quite a cool setup going on, but a um, little bit of problems with uh, finding the whale, or specifically finding the whale. So that's the deck, um, I hope you enjoy playing it if you give it a go, uh, it can be quite fun, you can possibly look at adding in some other cards, we have, um, uh, I've played versions of this in the past which runs a retribution or two which can also be um, a good thing to do with your tags, um, but this seems like the most kind of consistent version of what you've got today. Obviously, if you want to put hedge funds in, then um, please be my guest. You could uh, maybe take out the standoffs and the archer, swap a different piece of ice in. Um, you could take out the best defense um, if you don't mind uh, maybe losing to certain tech cards uh, or find a different way around those tech cards. Um, other than that, um, I found this deck really quite fun, it um, can pull out some really quite surprising wins, uh, often in less than 10 minutes which is uh, nice for getting a good few games in. But anyway, that's uh, Sophie's Choice, I hope you all enjoyed the video, um, I will ask you to click the like and subscribe button, which I think is the first time I've actually ever done this, I'm probably meant to do this after every video right, that's what everyone on YouTube does. Anyway, if you liked this, then, you know, hit those buttons because um, it helps other people find this video. 
and uh, I'll see you next time for another WooTube. Ciao for now.